It just did that by itself. It's Digital Shark Guttery. I'm James. That's Batman. And we're talking a deleted scene that was dropped today for the Batman movie. Your arch nemesis uh, was in it. Hi, Batman. How's it going? I can't do this the whole time. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's It'll keep going off by itself. <laughs> Oh, I know right. exactly what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about the Joker. Matt Reeves released today the deleted scene. He's been talking about this for over a month now. We've been hearing that it was a deleted scene and then a Joker scene was in the movie, but there was another one that was cut. And today we got to see the version that was cut. Scotty, what were your initial thoughts? Let's just jump right into it. What were your initial thoughts on that five minute clip that Matt Reeves released in 4K? Ma'am, my initial thoughts were why like why did you cut this <laughs> uh i think they should have kept it in man can you still hear i can hear it in my head it's messing with me <laughs> yeah totally all right uh but yeah so i i, I was fanboying out the whole time i'm speechless see Again. i i i really i really did enjoy the scene but I do understand why it was cut and I kind of agree with why it was cut and then I guess my camera and here, here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing is it's a great scene on its own. It stands alone. And in the film, we'd all geek out over it. But as a movie as a whole, it it's not a necessity to the plot. I think it adds, but the movie's already, mm -hmm. you're already at a three-hour time, right? And it's you could definitely get, I mean, people are arguing you can get rid of other things, but that was definitely a scene that could be removed. And not, it wasn't necessary to what we got overall because it's not like he uses the information he got there to catch the Riddler or figure out the Riddler or anything. Yeah. So it, it, it's... I mean, it's a great, and it, I really enjoyed the scene uh, myself. But I did understand why they got rid of it. But I got to ask you: you're like you're a, a Joker aficionado. You're like a big time. You love the Joker. Um, I know when you saw the movie initially, you weren't uh, over the moon with the portrayal of the Joker, and that now you get a five minute scene where we get the Joker. There's no like, it, maybe mm -hmm. it is, maybe it isn't. We get the Joker. What were your thoughts on the portrayal that we got in that scene? Has it changed? Has your opinion changed? A hundred percent. I have come, <laughs> I've come one, 180, a hundred percent, 180 dude. Uh, not only because I loved him in the Eternals and he's like a newer actor. I think he was in uh, one of those Harry Potter films too, right? Fantastic beasts. Oh, was he? Maybe I know he's not. in, uh, Maybe Dun not. he's in, he was in Dunkirk. Yeah. So he's a coming up actor that not a lot of people know, but now he's featuring in huge movies. And I think he's going to crush this dude. Uh, I already saw, a lot of jokers within his character but heath ledger like i'm getting chills just now talking about it like uh the voice to me and the way he's rasping it and the the laugh is not forced and that might be scripting like the laugh comes out naturally and just his thought process he's like wow batman you're really not as smart as you as you say you are and it just harpens into what the riddler's been saying the whole time i'm like for me, the scene could have easily fit in right before he met with the Riddler. They could have pulled the thing up and we could have been like, okay, he's going to see the Riddler. And then again, boom, it's holy shit. That's not the Riddler. <laughs> not at all. Uh, that would have been I a think nice. That's where, I think that's where it was. Uh, no, I think that was where it was meant to go. Actually, it was before. Because he he's trying to figure out who the Riddler yeah. is. Yeah. And so I, I don't just, know. Sorry to cut you off, but he just fed the Joker so much information in that one scene that the Joker can now just stick right in his back pocket. And that adds related. to that last scene. That adds to that last scene between Absolutely. the Joker and the Riddler. Yeah, definitely. So, there, I mean, look, if you look, I think as a whole, if this were is a finished trilogy, I think that scene, and they, they had a plan for two and three and all that, I think this scene would factor in and be a lot more important. But to the isolated film that is the Batman, I can see why. Mm -hmm. Why they cut it? What I loved is this was a very different iteration of the Joker. They didn't do the Heath Ledger. I mean, there are t there are, you know samples of yes, that, I mean, but it's I'm, not. I'm jumping the gun on it. I know, but I do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but there are like pieces of Heath Ledger in there. There's pieces of Mark Hamill in there, mm -hmm. and even the Gotham version of of the Jokers. And there's all these pieces of Joker in there. And when we got with something that we haven't seen on screen before, he wasn't. He he was almost a little bit more similar in in character in the way he spoke and stuff to the Jared Leto nightmare sequence Joker. I felt like I was getting a little bit more mm -hmm. like he's not he's crazy, but he's kind of still got some wits about him to an extent where he's not over the top. And Heath Ledger was some a little bit more dark and sinister. And I really and he was kind of maybe in the middle of those two a lot. I really liked I liked 
like his ha- hair was like decaying and falling out and his teeth were grimy and gross and his hands were covered in blood and you wonder what he's been doing in there and it is the one year anniversary of him being put in goth or put in arkham basically at this point when we meet him mm-hmm. i man if they ever go back and do a year one of this universe prequel like I don't know if them if they have history or if those injuries are self inflicted by the vote the Joker. Just like he had so many scars on his body, uh, I just I didn't think we were gonna get a Joker that is this far. I guess like already he's already got his claws, his talons in Gotham. I feel like yeah, yeah, and, and that's right. Here. And that's what Matt Reeves said he, he wanted to do. And actually, I have these quotes from the cinematographer explaining why he shot it the way he did. Because you yes. still, until the very end, you don't get a tight, you don't get a focused shot of him. We see him, mm-hmm. but we're always focused on Batman, which I thought was great because your focal point is Batman. You don't quite know. So so uh, what the cinematographer said about a month ago, he's been asked these questions. But he said, I cannot, I can't comment on who it is, but this Gotham is bubbling cesspool of crime isn't it so giving a little kiss or an introduction of who else may be living in the prison i mean what a fantastic opportunity to do that and again going back to the adage of you don't want to see too much but you never want to see too much sometimes or yeah but you don't show too much you never want to see too much sometimes seeing too much can distract from the beauty or joy of watching films i mean i loved it i love the process i love matt as a director so i mean you can take whatever you want from that i mean there's more stories to be told in this place you know there's more things to do there's more opportunities there this is oh hello (laughs) this is Uh, there's more things to do. There's more to do. This is why it's such a fantastic world to be in because it's a great opportunity to explore this world. So I like the idea also that he's saying from a cinematography standpoint that even though that is the Joker, he doesn't come out and say it, but that's the Joker. Because you never see who it is, that means it could be any plethora of villains. It's just the idea of the joke. The Joker is a stand-in for all of the villains of Gotham. It's a, mm-hmm. like he's It's the Joker in this scene, but it could be anyone. Yeah, and I think we were kind of debating that back and forth based on just the post credits. Like a lot of people were like, "Dude, it could be Mad Hatter still." Like you don't really know. It's not like they're gonna let him keep the hat in the <laughs> cell with him. So, uh, but those two characters look kind of similar depending on yeah. the artist. I man, I I think I hope they have a lot of villains, just like panels. I think they just got panels of the looks for all of them because the Joker and the Riddler they feel very similar. As far as their motives and like how dark they are, I'm hyped on this whole universe. They're I like gonna get what a trilogy. The... I need Harvey Dent. Like I need. Yeah, it. I like the one thing I really liked about this scene too is the Joker says, "This guy is you." He says right to Batman, "He's like you guys are the same person, you and this." And it's like of all the people, it's the craziest person in Gotham who has to bring that to the forefront of, of Batman. I think that's another reason why it could get cut because he doesn't really react on that too much. Well, mm-hmm. that kind of plays into it, but you get that again with the vengeance uh riddler vengeance goon right where he says I'm, yeah. he, so you kind of although this that might even this scene might even have made that scene more impactful and that the joker is telling you this is you're the same person and you don't believe it and then the the bad guy himself is telling you no we're actually the same person you gotta dig yeah. it so i think that would have been but it also could have been overkill because the riddler says it the vengeance so whatever but i really liked it he was he, i love the the darkness and i love the cl- the clown prince of crime i kind of got that from this that he mm-hmm. was like he's a crime lord it reminded me a lot of uh it was more it's similar to an arkham um the arkham games joker i think we were getting we're closer to that joker than any other ones i mean batman's going to him asking him who he is he's clearly <laughs> the guy to go to like uh He's been in so is he, he's been in Arkham for about a year. He probably knows every single other person that's in there. You know, they just keep moving people in next to him. Uh, I was going to say something else, too, about it, but it is a lot. It's a lot to take in right now. Five, I couldn't believe it was five minutes. I was expecting like a two minute to leave the scene. But yeah, it was five minutes. So that mm-hmm. actually, if you add that in, that makes your movie three hours and one minute with credits. Like that's, that's <laughs> right. that puts you over the three hour mark. Yeah. The Batman's going to be red. I think he's going to regret going to him. Like he just started the bromance between the two of them. And the Joker is now got a weapon he can use against him. Yeah. He's, he started this. And there's, that's yep. a line from a, from a, 
there's a few clues to the in the trailer. Some things from the trailer were in this, like what does he want uh, with me or something like that. And he goes, maybe you're the grand finale. I like that aspect of it as mm-hmm. well, which leads into I, I see. I'm on the mindset that the Riddler knows Bruce Wayne is Batman and he's toying with him enough. And he does. You don't. Re- the magician doesn't reveal his tricks, so he never comes out and says who it is, right? Because he doesn't mm-hmm. he can't do that. Batman has to figure out that he knows that he's Bruce Wayne. And I think this kind of and what the what Joker is like saying that. here, I think, adds to to that aspect of it. That mm-hmm. it's like the Riddler does know you're the grand finale. Batman's the grand finale. I think that's that's uh, part of it. So I'm, I I really like this. This scene was like it was. I was I was expecting something. I don't know what I was expecting, but this exceeded what I was expecting. It leads into I think um, um before the movie came out a week or two before the movie came out, I did a video with Fantasia on here, and I said that I kind of threw out this thing that what if the Joker's like the Hannibal Lecter for batman and that's exactly mm-hmm. kind of what this is where he gives them mm-hmm. that information and i love the one year anniversary's paper and he gave him all those riddler notes there's so much to dissect in this what did you what did you think of the we kind of touched on it briefly but what did you think of the joker's makeup in comparison to what we've seen in the past because i know again yeah. that first time you saw it you're like i don't know about it i loved it um <laughs> you get the scarring like it didn't necessarily look like he cut his lip with a knife yeah. the same way that Heath did but the one cheek was all like bulged out like he's just been messing with it dude like you can tell the guy's got serious issues he's biting yeah. his finger he's biting his fingernails down to like the bleeding cuticles um pulling his hair out you can see he has like serious and these are like uh, mental health things for real for people who have schizophrenia and all these other things like pulling hair out on their body. And but he's like to the extreme where he's I think he's, all those scars are self-inflicted, man. He's what? he's got serious issues. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt, said, Matt, Matt uh, Reeves said that he was based on the man who laughs the old oh my uh, God. Yeah, the, the film. Yeah. So I like that. I, I mm. love that we that we didn't get a clean shot of him um it leaves him more and mm-hmm. I, it's always like how do you do the joker without doing the joker again and i thought this was a neat way because you've established mm-hmm. that they have a past you've already established that they have a past which which i love and then you establish that um gotham is riddled with <laughs> excuse the pun riddled with these mm-hmm. types of characters they're all around and he's he's out there and look for me i think i i, I have one thing that i really want to see come up with the Joker in a sequel, and I'm going to do a video on it next week. It has to do with Jason Todd. I really want to see that. I think that would really like. I think you know, that would. I think you utilize the Joker like this, though, Scotty. You don't make you never make him the big bad in these movies. In the Matt Reeves versus Batman, you always make him there. He's always there, and but but he's significant. He has a significance. He's always there. There's a purpose mm-hmm. for the Joker being in these scenes, but he's never the big bad. Mm-hmm. And that's the crux too, is like the Joker always positions himself as such because it it, it still leaves Batman g- feeling guilty if he kills this guy because yeah. sure, this guy is causing all of these things, but it's just because this is who the guy is. Like he's not, his motives are not, like he doesn't want to kill Batman. He has said that in multiple iterations of the character. And, you know, just because you mentioned it, his teeth are too nice. So that Jason Todd moment, yeah. <laughs> like I want that stuff. His teeth look too nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Batman question. Like I thought you got off on this stuff. I like the Batman that we got in this because this Batman has empathy for these villains. But I thought you got Ooh, off on he this. And he's laughing at him at the end, yeah. and he's like, "You yeah. think you think they deserve this?" I was like, "Yeah, let's go." Like he's he knows him already. Man. It this scene fit already. perfectly into the dynamic of Batman and the Joker without mm-hmm. go without making the Phenomenal. movie about the dynamic. Yeah, it was well played on this it gave you every little bit it gave you so much information on batman and riddler and then the joker is the cherry on top like it just it fleshed out those characters in a five minute scene um obviously mm-hmm. they're fleshed out in the movie still i don't like again i don't think this taking this scene out took away anything from the movie obviously it didn't but it just it added so much more complexities to their stories uh, and to their characters that again though if this is going to be a trilogy or whatever it is that's a scene that that sh- could be impactful down the road heck yeah man i'm all in i'm all in on the joker and the batman like matt reeves five minutes you you turned scotty into a hater <laughs> to a lover <laughs> Back to the and i wasn't a hater yeah. it's just like that character know. Is so we've seen so many jokers so many jokers 
it's you know we're gonna run out of ideas eventually that, and this is just that, another good like amount together a nice little soup mixing it up they yeah, did that they with did a lot a, of these characters they did um, the yeah they did a, was another one yeah, I, I kind of I, so I was, some point it's like, wow, well, you're everything's grounded in reality. But I think the one neat thing is, even though Christopher Nolan did it, it was a different reality. Like they're very they're different realities, even though yeah. they're grounded. They're not this. They're not grounded mm-hmm. in the same. And I think I think these characters work to both their advantages. And now everybody's going to complain that this isn't as good as Heath Ledger's and blah blah blah. That's not no. that's not really the point. The point is this is a Joker that stands on his own. That is completely unique from everything else we've gotten and again what i love about the villains in this movie is they don't serve themselves like the movie doesn't serve the villains the movie serves the plot and serves the batman and that's where they're all driving to and once again the joker 100 percent more than any other villain in anything has served the batman in this scene by telling him not only is the riddler similar to him but he thinks he they deserved it like you said they deserve it mm-hmm. ha 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 like and that mm-hmm. to me that is such a crucial moment in the story of this particular battle. Dude, we are one more. No, we are one half. We're one half of a Joker movie away from setting up three Jokers, dude. They're doing a sequel to the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. They're talking about it right now. We have this Joker they just introduced, and we still have Jared Leto. I know it's a stretch, but like, I'm going to maybe go on a little bit of a rant, but the three jokers, they just said they're talking about this guy being the crown prince. Jared Leto is the criminal and Joaquin Phoenix is the gangster. Like we have them. We have them. I, I just pray, pray to the nerdy gods that DC is slow playing all of this and that all of these universes are just going to continue to build out to something awesome, dude. They can compete with Marvel. They can. They just need they to. Can. They can. I think the hardest part for your three go for your three jokers though is getting Joaquin Phoenix on board. He seems like he, although he loved playing mm-hmm. the character, but I think the script's got to be right for someone like that. Don't forget he turned down yes. uh, Doctor Strange like the last minute. So you got to. And they Phoenix can still is- pass the torch with that guy because he's not mm-hmm. like technically a joker, but you know, he could be the guy that inspires the one in that universe. Exactly. That I, I think, I mean, I was. I didn't think they were going to do it, but mm-hmm. I always was okay with the idea that this Batman takes place in the same universe as the Joker. And the there's a, you know, the Joker just is the precursor to the Joker that's dealing with Batman now. Like it, that's, what's Hopefully great about that. Purposeful. There's so many, yeah, there's so many great things about that Joker movie though. That mm-hmm. just like can tie into everything. Uh, so we're going to do a video on that next week though, where everything we know about Joker two and expectations and hopes oh, yeah. and dreams and ready. everything. But yeah, we're going to wrap this up though. This, I love the way this looked as well, where we didn't get it. It fit with the cinematography of the rest of the film, obviously, and uh, just the idea that we learned so much more about Batman and Bruce Wayne and how he's he. This whole movie is a journey about him realizing he is not vengeance; he is hope. And I think this scene, uh, this scene really hit the nail on the head uh, for that. But uh, anything else you want to say on this uh, topic? No, man. Uh, appreciate you having me on all the time. Yeah, Every day you. people are finding my channel from here. I got to start actually making some DC content over there, I think. So like, <laughs> don't let the Hawks holocrons deceive you. It's not just Star Wars. I do a lot over there. So I appreciate everybody that's coming to find me. Yeah, I'll put your link in the in the description yeah. below. Do you want to? Okay, I did a reaction. Just... So yeah, yeah it was awesome. Check that out. Uh, short and simple. Eight minutes. Loved it. Go there and watch it. But thank you so much for joining. I was I, this was like such a last minute thing. It's like, you want to do it? Yes. Okay, let's yeah. go. So, <laughs> thanks so much. Thank it was awesome. Uh, but that's everything here. Your just your channels in the description in the in the description Appreciate below. You. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own ha 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 universe. <laughs>